Hey guys, so I am going to tell you straight up why your Magic the Gathering local game store will probably not survive 2020. Now, as we know, the pandemic has been really difficult on many small game stores. Uh, game stores are no different than any other small business. They rely on people coming to the store, buying product, having some type of margin, and then leaving. Now, Magic products, the margins are very low. Magic margins are 10, 15% on booster boxes. On booster packs, they're closer to 30%, which you might not, you might be like, oh, that's pretty good high for like a blister pack or something like that. But there's always someone willing to sell it for under, under what price you can get at your distributor. And that's very bad. GameStop had a sale. I bought a bunch of things from GameStop. It was a really, really good deal. They were selling packs of $149 a pack. After tax in Texas, it's probably closer to $170, $175. Even at $175 a pack is cheaper than the maximal price point I can buy, $222 a pack for my distributor. Same exact pack, same blister pack, same everything. I got the majority of my orders. They come from all different states. It, you know, they came in all these boxes, nine different boxes, nine different huge boxes, well padded. So good job, GameStop. And it's very silly, right? I mean, GameStop has these sales uh, every holiday where they put magic cards on massive discount. How do you compete against 175 a pack? You can't. So what I do is I just buy from GameStop and then resell it. Because instead of buying from my distributor, I can save 50 cents buying from GameStop per pack, which is a lot because it's a percentage that you're worried about. That's what the margin is. The margin is how much of your profit you can make. Now let's talk about what's happening with events. So the only one benefit that you have as a game store that a Target, a Walmart, an Alpha Investments, a Card Kingdom, a TCG player, an eBay, you're never going to be cheaper than everybody. You're never going to have a better selection than everybody. But you could offer a local place for people to come meet and play Magic the Gathering. That's what you have. That's your competitive advantage compared to other online retailers or patrons or things of that nature. Or Amazon, right? Compared to Amazon. But your unique selling point, so I'm going to give you some business consulting. Your unique selling point, the USP, which is what they obviously, unique selling point, is that you can actually have people come in, sit very close to each other, and the pre-release is a really good example. Your customer acquisition, you know, Card Kingdom runs uh, Google ads and they run Facebook ads, and a lot of these bigger vendors, uh, Channel Fireball runs tons of Facebook ads with Wedge's face on it, or Tolarian Community College's face on it, so does Star City Games. They pay money to acquire a customer. Now, I don't know what their analytics looks, looks like, so I can't tell you how much money it costs. But there are times that they lose money. Like Blue Apron, that meal prepping company, they pay, I think, $100 to acquire a customer and who orders a $20 membership. But the concept is they might order again or they might have a high, high lifetime value. That's what the local game store has. It has the cost of acquisition for a pre-release at almost zero. Because people are just naturally going to go there. You know, how much money would it cost for me to get someone to go to a Kila dealership? Probably 200, 250 person in the door. Kila dealership would be like over the moon if I could bring 100 people at the cost of $200 a head at the dealership like 100 interested people who wanted to buy a Kia. Now, not all of them will buy the Kia, but that's okay because their margins are 800 to 1800 uh, at the very least when they sell a car. 800 is the 
built in lower in the profit margin on the car that you can't really go past. Now, let's talk um, about some other scenarios when your unique selling point is not a advantage, it is a disadvantage, then you are you are basically effed. So remember I was talking about the unique selling point being that, hey, you can create a community who is willing to pay more. So your cost per acquisition is less than a card kingdom, less than a TCG player and so on. But you have a community who's willing to give you better margins. Maybe they buy that box for $100, even though they can get it on Amazon Prime shipped to them for 95 because they like the community and they want the box right now. You know, like it's why supermarkets put all those really bad things for you, all those candies in front of the register, because that's the best place when people, oh, it's just $2. Let me get a box. Let me get a pack. Let me get some sleeves. Right? Uh, they even put magic cards near the register now <laughs> because it's uh, that addicting, I guess. When you talk about small business and you talk about this type of scenario where uh, the one unique selling point, the one reason that you would go and pay a local game store more money is now actually gone because there are no events. There's no large events. There's no, there's no events. There's no paper magic events and you're still selling paper magic. That is a disaster. That's like, whoa. Um, hmm. Let me try to explain this in a business term. Your advantage, your big advantage, your only advantage over the online sales, over the channel fireballs and the Rudy's and the whatever is now liability because you have to pay for all that space that you cannot use because of social distancing, right? And who knows when that will be better. Um, the best customer is a returning customer because it didn't cost any money to acquire them. Plus they're generally happy because obviously they returned again. So maybe maybe they're not 100% happy, but they're generally, I mean, for them to return, they're, they at least like it enough that they didn't you know, tell people to leave that place. And they're going to tell, you know, hey, Mom, I'm going to, uh, to play magic at this store. And your mom's like, oh, cool, cool. And then your mom might have a friend who plays magic at her work and then mention the store and be like, oh, cool, cool. And then th that's how you build. That's why a lot of um, comic books, even though they don't hire any marketing managers, they have really decent, they have a decent amount of reviews because people are just naturally attracted to reviewing a comic book store or a magic gathering store. It just is. It is what it is, right? Um, so when... You guys know I had a Google review thing for the store and I got bombarded by social justice warriors. I, I don't know if you remember that about uh, social justice woman warriors, right? They didn't like what I said on LinkedIn, uh, that certain Amanda figure, if you guys can recall. And before that, I had like 120 reviews. Like literally one out of every four people that came in the store would just go straight home to review it. I don't know why there was no marketing. We did have the sticker that said, please review us on Google, but that was that. I mean, it was pretty uh, interesting. Like I, I just can't, because in other businesses, that's not what happens, okay? Because I do marketing for many other different fat sectors, including auto. You know how difficult it is to get someone who bought a car to leave a good review? Really insanely difficult. So, when I'm looking at the magic store and just people are just general and not all the reviews are good. So I'll just be quite frank. Probably I think we had like a four star rating, maybe a 3.9, 4.1. It did change once um, Amanda, her friends, her social justice warriors uh, got onto it. Then it went down to a two because obviously they painted me as something that I, I am not. I don't know if you um, remember that, that was a pretty interesting I don't know how many of you guys remember that, but my store page got taken down by social justice warriors. But previous to that, we just had plenty of really good reviews. And now there's no Google business page at all for the store, <laughs> which sucks, but 
No, it is what it is. And that's why I don't really promote. I mean, it's... People like going to their local game store to meet other people with the same hobby. Uh, I went to my local game store the other day to buy a bunch of cards. And I was actually... Oh, I was... No. Uh, I was buying these sideshow figures. Uh, I remember Jean Grey, Jean Grey Phoenix, and Female Four. And these are very big figures. These are gigantic figures that, like, these are... I think one four scale, but they look pretty big. They're pretty heavy. And people were really excited. They were all saying, oh, thank you for supporting us. These are the customers. So are the potential customers telling me, oh, wow, what a great job you did supporting the store. Wow, can you support the store? Great, great. Like these were people who were actually really, really into the fact that I was buying this. And then the store obviously makes pretty good margins on it because it is a higher, more expensive luxury item. That's what the store is. Um, at some point in time, you know, when you shop at a store, especially a small business, especially a local game store, you can't really be too worried about nickel and diming. Yes, they need profit. Yes, they need to keep their lights on. And the only way to do that is to buy things at whatever price they priced at and assume that, you know, when things get a little bit better, maybe the price will go down. Anyway, hi guys. <laughs>